High glucose levels can lead to a wide variety of complications such as arthritis, infertility, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, cataracts, depression, and skin problems such as acne, wrinkles, and eczema. Even worse, it can cause type 2 diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Thankfully, if we don't consume more than our bodies can handle, the glucose can be stored in the liver and muscles. When those run out of space, the rest of it is turned into fat, and that's when glucose truly becomes a problem. But despite its bad reputation, our bodies need glucose. Organs such as the brain, stomach, and eyes all need it to work. Our mitochondria also use it, but by providing them with too much of it too quickly, cells begin to release free radicals. Nonetheless, even if our bodies use glucose, that doesn't mean we have to consume it. The body can make it on its own, and that is why Inuits who eat little to no glucose can survive on a diet only consisting of fat and protein. The author has wonderful things to say about continuous glucose monitors. With the help of one, she saw for herself the effect that food was having on her glucose levels. The effect food has on your glucose levels depending on the time of day that you eat. How foods can be paired in order to flatten glucose spikes. The best order to eat macronutrients. The glucose flattening benefits of exercise after meals, etc. Glucose can be found throughout the body, not only in the blood. Continuous glucose monitors monitors, for example, don't measure glucose from the blood. They measure it from the fat cells in one's arm, and glucose levels are constantly changing. After a high glycemic snack, such as a donut, glucose levels will typically rise and then quickly fall. This is known as a glucose spike, which is a rapid increase and drop in glucose concentration after you eat. And these spikes can cause brain fog, moodiness, anxiety, cravings, weaken the immune system, and even cause sleep problems. If you go to bed after eating a high glycemic meal, the glucose drop may wake you up in the middle of the night. The more glucose spikes we experience throughout our lives, the more our fasting glucose levels will rise, and this increases inflammation and may lead to the many health problems I already mentioned. Healthy fasting glucose levels are usually considered to be between 60 and 100 milligrams per deciliter. Between 100 and 126 milligrams per deciliter is considered to be pre-diabetes, and above 126 is considered diabetes. The author, however, recommends you do everything you can to keep your fasting glucose levels below 85. Above 85 milligrams per deciliter can begin to cause health problems, but this might not be healthy enough. Even if your fasting glucose levels look healthy, glucose spikes are still unhealthy, and for this reason, you should flatten your glucose spikes as much as possible. In fact, Act. The author recommends you eat in such a way so that your glucose levels don't rise above 30 mg per deciliter from your fasting glucose. So if your fasting glucose levels are 80 mg per deciliter, your meal shouldn't spike your glucose levels to anything above 110 mg per deciliter. Later in the video I will share some hacks from the book to help you flatten your glucose spikes, but to make sure they're actually working, you may want to get yourself a glucose monitor and see for yourself how much your glucose levels are rising with and without the hacks. There are different forms of glucose. They are starch, fiber, fructose, and sucrose. Starch can be found in plants, but most of it is found in the parts of the plant that don't get any sunlight when the plant is growing, such as the roots and seeds. These include roots such as beets, potatoes, carrots, yams, and seeds such as barley, rice, wheat, peas, beans, lentils, and chickpeas. Starch turns into glucose in the body. Fiber is for the most part found in flowers and leaves, but also in fruits and roots. Fiber is not absorbed into the bloodstream and does not turn into glucose in the body. In fact, it helps slow down the absorption of glucose, and it's good for the microbiome and for digestion. Fructose, which is a kind of sugar, can be found in fruit, a food group that most people consider to be very healthy. But the truth 
truth is that although fructose has a better reputation than glucose, it can be more problematic. That being said, the way fructose is metabolized in the body, it doesn't usually cause a glucose spike the same way something like white rice, a starch does. But don't let this fool you, fructose is still negatively affecting your health. In fact, all of the fructose you consume will be stored as fat as the body cannot store it in the liver or muscles. According to the author, if you start to use a continuous glucose monitor to see how much the foods that you eat spike your blood glucose, you will often see that something like a slice of chocolate cake which contains not only wheat, a starch, but also fructose, will spike your blood glucose as much as a big serving of something like white rice. The glucose spiking effect of both of these foods is being caused by the starch, but the slice of cake is also causing a fructose spike that isn't being shown by the glucose monitor. So even if these two foods show a glucose spike that is just as sharp, the slice of cake is worse for your health, so you must be extra careful with foods that are sweet. More often than not, something that tastes sweet is loaded with fructose, and glucose monitors cannot measure fructose as it isn't converted into glucose. To make matters worse, fructose is not needed by the body, so it won't make it on its own the way it makes glucose, and you do not need to consume it in food. In fact, fructose can cause more oxidative stress than glucose, and it can raise LDL cholesterol and contribute to the development of heart disease. It can also lead to the development of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and other health problems. Having said that, a whole fruit that hasn't been juiced or made into a smoothie will also provide you with some fiber, which is good. So if the fructose that you're consuming comes from a whole fruit, it's definitely not as bad as the fructose found in processed foods. Processed foods have little to no fiber, so it basically leaves the consumer with nothing but starch and sugars. Not only that, but manufacturers know that we love food that is sweet, so they add even more sugar to processed foods to make them taste better. We love sweetness so much for a variety of reasons. Foods that are high in sugar provide us with a quick boost of energy and give us a dopamine rush. At the same time, our bodies trust a sweet food because in nature, foods that are sweet are safe to eat. They aren't poisonous, but in nature, there are no processed foods. In nature, wherever there is starch and sugar, there is fiber as well. So it's best to limit processed foods as much as possible, and only eat sugar and whole fruits. Nonetheless, fruit should still be consumed in moderation. For hundreds of years, fruit has been selected and harvested to increase its size and sweetness. So the fruit we eat today is not the fruit our ancestors ate. It was nowhere near as sweet, nor as big. Anyways, let's move on to sucrose, which is the other kind of sugar. It's made when fructose links with glucose with the help of an enzyme. Sucrose is better known as table sugar. It's 50% glucose and 50% fructose, and these four compounds, starch, fiber, fructose, and sucrose are known as carbohydrates. With the exception of fiber, these compounds are one of the main reasons why so many people, about 88% of Americans, according to the author, are metabolically unhealthy. If you are one of these people, listen very closely. Here are a few ways to flatten glucose spikes and improve your health. Eat foods in the right order. The best order to eat foods to flatten glucose spikes is the following. Start with fiber, then eat protein and fat, and finally starch and sugars, fructose and or sucrose. Fiber, protein and fat won't spike your blood glucose very much, and when the starch and sugars finally reach the stomach, it won't be in an empty stomach, and they will therefore not spike your blood glucose as much. At the same time, fiber makes it harder for glucose to enter the bloodstream, so less of it is absorbed. Protein and fat also help flatten glucose spikes, and can be eaten with a fiber, no problem. According to the author, this simple hack can reduce glucose spikes by up to 73%, and your insulin spike by up to 48%, and you'll experience fewer cravings later in the day. However, fruit doesn't count as fiber, in case it wasn't obvious. Even though it does have fiber, it unfortunately comes with fructose, so start with some other source of fibers such as vegetables, broccoli, asparagus, and spinach are all great. Flatten your breakfast curve. 
In the West, people say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Quite a few health experts actually disagree with this and insist that the healthiest breakfast is no breakfast at all, but I won't get into that here. If you like having breakfast, by all means have breakfast. But in the West, when people think of breakfast, they think of cereal, croissants, fruit juice, granola, and toast and jam. The glucose drop after the spike will deplete your energy and make you feel sleepy in the middle of the day. It will also make you feel hungry hungry sooner. The author actually agrees that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and that's why she strongly recommends having a breakfast that won't spike your blood glucose. This is especially important because when you wake up in the morning, you're in a fasted state and more sensitive to glucose, so a high glycemic breakfast can easily cause the sharpest glucose spike of the day. In short, if you eat breakfast, do it right. It's the worst time for sugar and starches. If you're going to have breakfast, have one that is full of fiber, protein, and healthy fats. And if you have to have something sweet for breakfast, have a fruit, but have it after you had some fiber, protein, and fat. With that said, if you skip breakfast, this still applies. Your first meal of the day, at whatever time it is, should follow those same rules. Sugar is sugar. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that some sugars are better than others. Table sugar is just as bad as honey, which is just as bad as agave nectar, which is just as bad as maple syrup, which is just as bad as coconut sugar. Natural sugars such as honey may contain healthy vitamins and minerals, but the amount of nutrients in honey don't make up for all the sugar. It really isn't worth it. The author also recommends avoiding aspartame, maltitol, sucralose, and xylitol, but you don't have to avoid all sweet sweeteners, allulose, monk fruit, stevia, and erythritol are okay. Having said that, do remember that a food that is high in sugar is okay as long as you eat it in moderation. When you do eat sugar, just make sure it's worth it. Reach for vinegar before you eat. This hack is very interesting. According to the author and many studies, one tablespoon of vinegar with a glass of water before eating sugar or starch can reduce glucose spikes by up to 30% on some occasions, and does it in a way so that the body doesn't release insulin, which is of course good because insulin causes inflammation. Adding vinegar to your diet may also help you lose weight and lower triglycerides, among other benefits. Apple cider vinegar seems to be the most popular for this, but apparently any vinegar works. Rice vinegar, balsamic vinegar, they're all fine. With that said, there are some warnings to keep in mind. Vinegar can cause heartburn, and apple cider vinegar is unpasteurized, which can complicate pregnancy. So if you're pregnant, talk to your doctor. After you eat, move. This one is very simple. Within 90 minutes after finishing a meal, move. Take a short walk or do some exercise. If you're going to take a walk, aim for 20 minutes. But as little as 10 minutes can lower the glucose spike of that meal by up to 27% without increasing insulin. This will also lead to fewer cravings, less weight gained, and more energy. If you like lifting weights, know that it can lower a glucose spike by up to 30%. The last thing I want to say is that it's important to remember that although your glucose levels are an important health marker, it's just one health marker. Many unhealthy foods such as trans fats and alcohol may not spike your blood glucose, but they're still terrible for you. They're just hurting you in a different way. Keep that in mind. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.